EIP 1559 is set to be implemented in July 2021, but not everyone is happy. A large majority of Ethereum miners are against the proposal. And in this video, I'm going to explain why. We are going to cover what EIP 1559 is in easy to understand terms, the positives, the negatives, and also we're going to cover something that I feel that no one is speaking about right now that is going to be massive for Ethereum. And if that sounds good, make sure to stick until the very end of this video. Really, this is an important one. You want to pay attention. And of course, don't forget to hit the like button. And with that being said, let's get into the content. Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. First things first, a quick summary of how Ethereum gas fees work. It's a pretty simple supply and demand model. We have blocks or on this visualizer, these trains that people want to get onto. The thing is they're limited. There's not a lot of room. So if you want to go on the train and I want to go on the train, or in this case, the block, we need to outbid each other. And what's happening right now is that this auction model is not efficient and people are paying gas fees of $50, $100, $200. So this is the problem right now with Ethereum's auction model, right? And on top of this, one of the biggest problems is fee estimation. You never know how high or how low these fees are going to be. It's always changing. But EIP 1559 seeks to solve this by having all transactions pay the same fee rate as much as possible. So the same fee rate as much as possible, how does this make sense? Well, with EIP 1559, instead of just taking your fee and giving it to the miner, there's going to be a portion of the fee that is burned, right? So there's going to be a base fee. This is going to be burned, removed from circulation. And then on top of that, there's going to be a tip that will go to the miner. So this model really only works if the fee has low demand or if the network has low demand, right? If the network has low demand, according to this EIP 1559 upgrade, the base fee will be all you need, right? You pay the base fee, your transaction goes through. But the truth, the reason why I look at this and I think there's a big misconception is that this isn't going to make these fees just go away and become cheap, right? Still, I do see these fees remaining high. Why? Because this is all based on the network having no demand, right? But right now we have demand. I don't see us having less demand in the future. The only way I do see that is if we enter into a bear market across the whole crypto space, then yes, maybe the base fee alone will cover the fee. But what happens is when the network has high demand, you're going to have to give a tip to the miner. And by that point, right, very large network activity, we're pretty much gonna go right back to the auction model. So EIP 1559 replaces the existing hard cap on block size with two values, a long-term target of 10 million gas per block and a new hard ceiling of 20 million gas per block. Over the long term, the network adjusts the base fee up and down to target the desired average block size. While blocks are under the target of 10 million gas per block, the fee decreases over time to encourage demand. And while blocks are over the limit, the fee increases over time to discourage demand. So when we look back at this model, right, this only really works as intended is when there is low demand of the network, then the base fee is stable, it's low, everyone's getting cheaper fees. But as long as there's activity, it is going to increase. And remember this base fee, by the way, even though it's not a set fixed price, it is not very volatile, I'd say. Right now with this auction model, it can go up and down any day, every second. But with this base fee, depending on the network activity, right, if we're at our target thresholds below or above, this base fee will bump down or bump up. But overall, this model is still better than what we currently have, right? The fees are going to be maybe a little bit lower, but they're going to be more stable and more predictable. Of course, someone here is not happy and that is the miner. Why? Because if we're using just the base fee, right? They're not getting any of that, that's being burned. And then if they're getting the tip in the auction model, how much of the tip will be worth it for these miners to participate? Therefore, everyone wants to do this, right? Not the miners, but the developers, the users, no problem, right? Hopefully cheaper fees, more predictable fees, but the miners don't wanna do this. But the thing is, these miners right now are pretty much being overpaid, right? Total mining revenue surpassed a record 1.3 billion in February with some 
50% coming from fees alone, according to CoinMetrics. So right now, these miners on Ethereum are making so much money anyway, that even if these fees decrease, they still will be making a lot of money. But we all know that it's a problem when you're making less relative to what you were making, even if you were being overpaid. So because of this, miners will have options, right? Of course, some of them might not want to go through with this hard fork. Also, miners, if they want, they don't have to be on Ethereum. This is a free market. They can pick up and they can go to a different blockchain. The problem is these other blockchains that they might want to go to, they're not going to make the same money, right? They're going to make even less than what they would make after this hard fork, after this update of EIP-1559. So what Ethereum miners might actually do, and this can be a problem, is they can fork and make their own chain. And making a fork, a hard fork, is not good for anyone. Why? Because you are making a network that is decentralized with a lot of different nodes and miners in the network, and you're separating them. And now each of these projects has less miners. Right now, Ethereum is very decentralized. This is the reason why this proposal was created in 2019 and it has still not been implemented. The larger you are, the harder it is to make an update. For this reason, I don't think that Bitcoin, for example, will have any major updates. It's just too big. Ethereum is very big, but it's still at a level where if everyone agrees, there can be updates. So what would happen, right? These Ethereum miners who still want to have these higher fees, they can break off and they'll have their own blockchain over here and then we'll have the Ethereum that we have today. But it also doesn't really make sense to me that these miners would break off into their own side chain because who's going to use the network, right? If you or I were looking at this system, right, and we want to use one of these blockchains, we're going to use the Ethereum that we have known for years that has better fees. Why would we go ahead and build projects or use this break off Ethereum chain? So I really don't see the point here of these miners branching off. They might do it. But also, I don't really see them going to another chain. I do think that this hard fork, uh, that this update EIP 1559 will happen. Whether miners want to join or not, it will likely happen. Of course, this is crypto and Ethereum and roadmaps are not really followed. So if it's not July of 2021, I do think eventually that it will happen. And something that's very interesting is that the Ethereum we have today is actually a hard fork. It is not the original Ethereum. The original Ethereum, surprisingly, is Ethereum Classic. In 2016, there was a smart contract hack called the DAO hack. And Ethereum users who wanted to reverse this hack, they branched off, created a fork, and that is the Ethereum that we have today. Most of the time, the fork of a project is not successful, but Ethereum happens to be the exception in that case. I don't think these miners will leave and create their own project. Again, like I said, who's going to want to use this forked Ethereum if the gas fees are higher when we can use the current Ethereum that we're comfortable with, where the gas fees are hopefully lower and also they're more stable. Now, the thing about this is this is more temporary. It won't be as profitable for these miners in the moment, but eventually it will be again. Why? Because right now it costs a lot of money to play the game. So even when you get a reward back, it may not be very profitable, right? Because right now Ethereum works on proof of work. So you need to pay for hardware, which is expensive, electricity, and then you get a reward back. But in the future, Ethereum 2.0, we will be using proof of stake. You won't need expensive hardware. You won't need expensive electricity. All you'll need is your Ethereum to stake. So the cost of play will be much lower. Think about, think about it this way. Using simple numbers in the current proof of work model, let's say it costs $300 to play and you get a reward of $400. That's a $100 profit. But let's look at proof of stake where it doesn't cost as much to play. Let's say it only costs $100 to play, but the reward is lower. The reward is only $200 this time. It's not $400. In the end of the day, that's still a $100 profit. So in the short term, these miners will continue to pay for electricity and for hardware, and they're gonna get a reward, and this reward is still gonna, you know, it's gonna cut in half. They won't be as profitable. But when we get to Ethereum 2.0, it won't cost as much to play, so the rewards will be very profitable. At this point, we can see that EIP 1559 is not going to make these fees low, but what it's going to do is maybe make them a little bit lower, and also make it a more stable, predictable market. But there is something with this proposal that I think everyone agrees with, even the miners. 
and that is the economic impact this will have on the price of Ethereum. Right now, there's no hard cap limit on Ethereum. So using, again, simple numbers here, every day, 100 Ethereum, 100, 100, 100, 100. And as we know, the larger the supply gets, it makes the current supply less valuable. So in this case of EIP 1559, remember, we're gonna burn the base fee. So in this model, let's say 100 Ethereum are printed a day, but we're also burning 100, right? So 100 printed, 100 burned, 100 printed, 100 burned. And in this sense, it's almost like a hard cap. It's not an official hard cap, but we're, we're producing, but we're burning. But this is where it gets great for Ethereum's economic model. When the network fees are high, right? Remember what we said, the base fees can still be very high when there is a lot of demand in the network. A lot of Ethereum is going to be burned. And in that case, let's say 100 Ethereum produce a day, but 110 Ethereum removed from circulation. And in this model, Ethereum actually becomes deflationary. And this is very good for the price of Ethereum. So putting yourself in the shoes of a miner, maybe you're not happy with getting lower fees. But in this case, the rewards that you get, it's more valuable. Think about it this way. If you're participating in a chain that has the best fees ever, right? The best fees in the world. But what you're earning is not valuable. You're just earning something that doesn't go up over time. But in this case, it's better for the security model of the system, right? Maybe you're making less Ethereum relative to what you were making before, but you're getting a more valuable asset and hopefully or likely it will increase in price over time. So this is a very important thing to think about when it comes to Ethereum. Yes, not everyone is gonna be happy with this proposal, but then you have to think, what is the alternative, right? Are they gonna to go to another chain where they're gonna get less anyway? Or are they going to fork to a new chain that probably no one is going to use? Now, what's very, very interesting about EIP 1559 is that it's going to address the issue of economic abstraction. You see right now before EIP 1559, transaction fees technically didn't have to be paid in Ethereum. And this is a problem, right? If you don't need Ethereum, what's the value? Think about Polkadot, Cardano, any other blockchain really. If you don't need the coin of that network, what is the point? If I can use all these Ethereum applications, but I don't need Ethereum, what is the point? So EIP 1559 largely fixes this problem. The base fee part of every transaction is denominated in Ethereum and is always going to get burned. The base fee will have to be paid in Ethereum. But if we look at this article, it states we say largely fixes this problem because EIP 1559 can prevent economic abstraction of the base fee, but not the tip. So if we go through everything that we spoke about in this video, right? All the hype in the media, EIP 1559, Ethereum, cheap, fast. That's not the truth. The truth is it will stabilize the fees, make them more predictable. But as long as there's network demand, the fees aren't going to be extremely cheap, just maybe cheaper. And in the short term, the miners are not happy. But over the long term, this makes sense. When we have EIP 1559 mixed with proof of stake, where it doesn't cost very much to run a node, and also Ethereum 2.0 will have shard chains. So we'll be able to have more transactions per second and cheaper fees. Remember, this is a roadmap. It's step by step. And this is a good first step. And I do think, like I said, this is actually going to be implemented. Maybe it's going to include all these miners. Maybe it won't. But overall, I think it will happen. But I want to know what your thoughts are. I know even after I make videos like this, there's a lot of people in the comments that find problems with this whole entire EIP 1559 update. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. It's not like I have a clear answer on this. I'm just as, I guess, cautious about this whole model as you guys are. It all sounds good on paper, right? And we can make these predictions how we think it may work, but in the end, it may not work this way. It may, it may be worse. Who knows? Maybe it'll even be better than we expected. So put your comments down below. Like this video. Do it right now. Please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.